All videos filmed in this presentation were in fully masked company following state and school guidelines. An important part to understanding our Orange One robot is the progression made from the 2020 season. We start with Red One, a fast, low shooter bot we took to our first competition. Then we move to Blue One, which addressed some major design improvements we wanted to make. And finally comes Orange One, which takes the design concepts from the previous robots and optimizes them for the at-home challenge. We had a lot of success with our shooter on Red One, so we prioritized the shooting missions, power port, and interstellar accuracy. We also wanted to be able to use Red One to test autonomous coats, so we needed to use the same drivetrain, so we prioritized Galactic Search, as our drivetrain is fast, but not agile enough to excel in other driving challenges. By designing a robot that is a progression of Red One, it allows us to integrate code and designs from Red One and Blue One. We kept the West Coast drivetrain from Red One port speed, and so we can test autonomous paths with a Red One robot without having this year's robot complete. In order to quickly pick up the balls in Galactic Search and PowerPort, we decided to go with an over the bumper intake because we felt that it would be the quickest way to get the balls in our robot. In Blue One, we worked on an indexing system with constant compression and a speed differential to keep balls from binding. We took this and removed the first half of the system and replaced it with a hopper as we only need to hold three balls, and the hopper allows us to quickly drop balls in it for the power port challenge. In blue one, we provided our shooter a fully adjustable hood. That combined with our turret allows our shooter to be very accurate, which we decided we would incorporate into orange one design, since accurate shooting is important for power port and interstellar accuracy. We chose an over the bumper intake for its reliability and speed. Our first roller is a first roller with silicon tubing, increasing the grip it has on the power cell, allowing it to quickly transfer off of the ground and into the intake. The second and third rollers are 3D printed rollers. Uh, when we were prototyping, we used 3D printed pulleys. Uh, we found that the pulley's Tro design uh, allowed for a good grip, but still allowed for internal movement of the power cells. This is important because we use vectored intake rollers to center the power cell. We have a Falcon motor to make sure that we are always going faster than our drivetrain, and we have gas springs on both sides to provide a constant pressure on the power cell and the intake. And we have solenoid, two solenoids to keep the intake in the up position while the challenge starts. This is our Indexo. We call it that because it is a combination of our indexing subsystem and our exoskeleton. In our Orange One modification, we cut out the front portion to create a mini hopper that funnels the balls into the indexer. And we also have an agitator that spins to prevent power cells from jamming. One of the main issues that we ran into with Red One was that power cells tended to bind when they were coming around the corner due to over compression and power cell on power cell rotation. We decided to fix this in two ways. The first way was by creating a smooth S-shaped curve that provided more consistent compression of the power cells throughout the path. The second way was by looking at the geometry of how the power cell moved throughout the bend and calculating the required amount of speed differential between the outer belts and the pivot point in order to minimize power cell rotation. Both modifications combined makes the possibility of jamming in the indexo highly unlikely. This helps improve the reliability of the indexo as well as significantly reduce the load of the system, allowing us to speed it up. We also mocked up our indexo and plywood before beginning the full aluminum assembly. We were able to note the difficulties and the performance of the system. Then we adjusted our design to optimize things such as belt center to centers, gear meshes, and adjusting our structural ribs to account for new loads that we were unable to foresee. Our shooter is mounted to an Armabot 240 turret driven from a custom SLS 3D printed gear with a maximum rotation of about plus or minus 100 degrees. It is powered by two Falcons direct drive with a maximum RPM of about 6,000. We use two four inch brass flywheels to increase our shooter's moment of inertia and reduce the drop in RPMs after we shoot a ball, allowing us to shoot much faster. Last year, in Infinite Recharge, we found that our shooter motor maintenance was incredibly tedious and time consuming. So we redesigned our shooter and created modules for the Falcons. These modules house the motor, belt, pulley, and bearing, allowing us to remove the module with three nuts and even replace it with a new one in a matter of seconds. We also have a custom SLS 3D printed hood that allows us to adjust our hood angle and optimize our power cell trajectories. 
This year, in order to achieve an optimal trajectory for our power cells, a robot uses interpolated values to determine the RPM of our flywheel and rotations of our hood using preset distances from the goal. On a robot, we also use a limelight vision camera as well as PID values to automatically aim the turret and range the shooter RPM and hood rotations. The speed of our intake also changes based on the robot's total speed to ensure that our intake is always moving at double the speed of the robot. We utilize beam brake sensors for indexo logic to ensure that power cells are properly staged and ready for shooting. We also use a secondary limelight to, to locate power cells in the Galactic Search Challenge. Along with this, we utilize odometry to correct autonomous pathing. Some cool facts about a robot are that we have greatly expanded our fabrication capabilities in the last two years. And as a result, our robot has 33 unique in-house 3D printed parts and 20 unique parts machined on our new router. Our POE and CAN bus boards are also custom circuit boards. During our prototyping and testing, we determined that one and a half inches of compression was ideal for good control of the power cells while not over compressing them. We then applied this standard throughout our blue one and orange one designs. We also implemented a new method of driving the robot using a Forza Xbox controller setup that utilized the trigger inputs. Finally, we will leave you with some awesome videos of our new robot.